Continuing, the subtitle is The Mission, for this is the one referred to by, well, it's quoting, for this is the one, for this, well, in the book it says it one way, I'm going to read it from, off of the um, Masora app, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Elias, Salakia, that's the prophet Isaiah. Say uh, Isaiah, uh, saying the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, maketh his path straight. The mission of John the Baptist had long before been described by Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah 43 and 4. Here Matthew again emphasizes, again emphasizes fulfilled prophecy in the coming of Yahweh Shah, Mashiach is divine king. Matthews 1 and 22, Matthews 2 and 5, Matthews Oh, 2 and 5, 2 and 15, 2 and 17. But as herald of the great king, John did not clear the roads and highways of obstacles, but sought to clear men's hearts of the obstacles that kept them from the king. The way of the Lord is the way of repentance, turning from sin to righteousness, turning moral and spiritual paths that are crooked to ones that are straight, ones that are fit for the king. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain hill be made low. Isaiah continues, and left rough ground, I'm going to get that because that's deep. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill and shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. Meaning in that coming day, you know, they, he, the Most High is gonna take them blinders off everybody. Everybody's gonna see his, the Most High Son, Yahweh. By well, the Most High is gonna. Everybody's gonna see Yahweh's Son, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, in his full glory. You get what I'm saying? The call of John's voice was voice. So like it, the call of John's voice that was crying in the wilderness of Judea was the shouting of urgency, commanding people to repent, to confess sin and the need of a savior. His path, trebles are well known and the Greek term implies because they are clearly revealed in scripture. Uh, it's saying crime. Uh, that that ain't the word that they used. Uh, his paths are well. No oh, I read all that. Salakia. So it's another subtitle. Going back to Matthews. The manner. Now John. Well. I'm going to read it verbatim from my sort app. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. John must have been a startling figure to those who saw him. He, he claimed to be Yahweh by Yashim Yahweh Shah's messenger, but he did not live, dress, or talk like other religious leaders. Those leaders were proper, well-dressed, well-fed, sophisticated, and worldly. John obviously cared for none of those things and even made a point of forsaking them. His garment of camel's hair and his leather built about his waist were as plain and drab, dark, drab, drab. Drab as the wilderness in which he lived and preached. His clothes were practical and long wearing, but far from being comfortable or fashionable, he was much like, and that's the spirit, he was much like the first Elijah. You see that? He was much like the first Elijah in that regard. Sec yeah, I said, at first they tried to say that it was reincarnation, but first, like. Two, one, and eight. This is the book of Second Kings, 
one and eight, and they answered him, he was a hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins, and he said, it is Elijah, the Tishabite. Going back to Matthews. I just highlighted this. This is crazy. That's Satan. Something. You know what I mean? Crazy. Um, his diet of locusts and wild honey was a salaki. Wild honey was as spartan as his clothing. It was a nourishing but little else. It was nourishing but little else. John's very dress, food, and lifestyle were in themselves. A, a, a rebuke to the self-satisfied and self-indulgent religious leaders of Israel. The scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, and priests. It was also a rebuke to most of the people who thought, who though they may not have been able to indulge in the privileges of their leaders, nonetheless admired and longed for the same advantages. John's purpose was not to turn the people into hermits or ascetics. He called on no one, not even his disciples, to live and dress as he did. But his manner of living was a dramatic reminder of the many loves and pleasures that keep people from exchanging their own ways for Yahweh by Yahshim Yahweh Shaz. The ministry. The, uh, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. The immediate effects of John's preaching was dramatic. People were coming from the great city of Jerusalem, which was considerable distance away. They came, in fact, from all Judea and all the districts around the Jordan. In other words, they were coming from all other southern Salaki. They were coming from all over southern Palestine, including both sides of the Jordan River, as Matthew reports later in the, his gospel. And it's using the people recognize John as a prophet. And it's using John, I mean, Salaki, Matthew's 21 and 26. But if we shall, of men, we fear the people for all hold John as a prophet. That those Jews submitted to being baptized is more than a little significant because that was not a traditional Israelite ceremony. It was completely different from the Levitical washings, which consisted of washing the hands, feet, and head. It's going to the Essenes. The Essenes, a group of Israelite ascetics who lived in the northwest shore of the Dead Sea, practiced a type of ceremonial washing, ceremonial washing that more clearly resembled baptism. But both the Levitical and the Essene washings were repeated, those of the Essenes as much as several times a day or even hourly. hourly. They re represented repeated purification for, for repentant sinning. John's washing, however, was one time. Uh, only one time washing the Jews performed was for Gentiles, signifying their coming as outsiders in the true faith of Judaism. Now, like I say, I doubt that. You know what I mean? Uh, well, then again, though, when they say the Gentiles, maybe it's going into the Gentile foreigners, you know what I mean? You know, not the foreigners, Salakia, the Gentile, you know, the true Gentiles, the Gentiles that were Israelites, but this was raised in heathen culture or, or under heathen customs. So, like I said, I never researched it. Maybe with the spirit of law, I, I will check into that. A Jew who submitted to such a right demonstrated the fact that he was an outsider who saw interest into the people. Amazing mission from the members of the, yeah, I'm not gonna read that. Yeah. Uh, I will read this though. It says, we know from subsequent accounts in the gospels that many of those acts of repentance must have been superficial and hypocritical because John soon lost much of his following just as Yahweh will eventually lose most of his popularity. The impact of John's ministry on the Israelites was profound and unforgettable. The way of the king had been announced to them, and they had no excuse for not being ready for his coming. Calm, and that's the spirit. Because at the end of the day, so, and that's what we preach all the time. This this message has went, went out to pretty much the whole world. You know what I mean? Like I was listening to Apostle Ramla speak on um, how you got all these different camps, like in Colombia and uh, Panama. 
you know, just all around the world. You got them pretty much in every major city. You know, you might not have them in every city, but every major one at least. So that goes beyond just that because now they like in different parts of the world. You know what I mean? So, you know, it won't be an excuse when that time comes because, like I said, when you really read Scripture, when the Most High sent out his prophets, you know, he always, that's what makes him his 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 anger, his indignation, righteous because he forewarns you before he does it. You know what I mean? Just deep, just like like if you ever seen Clash of the Titans, even though you know it's going off with that Zeus and all that old shit, it's a part on there. The, not the original, but the, the remake. It's a part on there. Like Zeus, it, it's confusing too. But Zeus, they remember they had the 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 the, the monster, the Kraken. You know what I mean? So they was talking about sending out the Kraken, but then he gave his son. The power to, I guess, stop the cracking, which was, like I said, it's like I, double minded or whatever. That's how you got some bullshit. But anyhow, uh, it was a prophet on there because remember, it's the prophet kept on talking about, like, yeah, we got to kill the daughter. Yeah, he was foreseeing and, and speaking on the doom. And I always think of that because, like I said, you know, I know it, it's not uh, a biblical story, but like I said, people. When I when I when I when I see that movie or when I think of that movie, I think of when that dude was prophesying. He was saying he you know he saw it coming. You know, what I mean? he was looking at the size. And actually, you know, although you know it's that Greek mythology. You know, at the end of the day, he was foreseeing or foretelling. Uh, but I'm about to finish this. Uh, I'm going to repeat that. The, the way of the king had been announced to them, and they had no excuse for not being ready for his coming. And when his second coming come, nobody will have an excuse for when he come this time. So what he does to this place, you know, what can anybody say? And rightly so. This place deserves to be all the way fucked up. I mean, I was listening to the uh, elder Barack. He was saying how California, I mean, California probably, probably ooh, that was probably a dangerous place to be for a spiritual man. Uh, you know, man, try to walk with Yahweh, even though Yahweh can send one man to do it like Elijah and destroy the place. But, you know, I did a video, and a few brothers did a video about how they wanted to ban the Bible, but then they was trying to say that they weren't really banning the Bible. But when you really research it, they try to ban the Bible, and now they try to pass a law. If they didn't pass the law, allowing 12-year-olds to actually get sex changes, and they actually go pay for it. So, you know what I mean? Just play. Woo! Anyhow, last um, chapter. Um, six things demonstrate the true greatness of John. One, he was filled with and controlled by the Spirit even from his mother's womb. Luke 1 and 15. Two, he was obedient to Yahweh by Yeshem Yahweh's word. From childhood, he followed Yahweh's will and from it never wavered. Three, he was self-controlled, drinking neither wine or liquor. That's the Spirit. Luke 1 and 15. In his food, dress, and lifestyle, he was temperate and austere. Another austere man. First, four, I mean, uh, four, he was humble. His purpose was to announce the king, not to act kingly or take for himself any of the king's prerogatives. Speaking of Yahweh, John said, After me, one is coming who is mightier than I, and I am not fit to stoop down and untie this. See, they changing it. I'm going to get it the correct way. Mark 1 and 7. And priest saying, there cometh one mightier than I, after me the, the latchet of the, whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. Oh, yeah, it's saying the same thing. I know it's it's said in, I think it's in all the Gospels, that same verse is just written differently a little. And on a later occasion, he must increase, but I must decrease, which was John. So, yeah, that's a humble guy. Because you got to remember, uh, in scripture, you know, some of John's disciples actually became Yahweh Shai's disciples. He must increase, but <coughs> I must decrease. He courageously and faithfully proclaimed Yahweh's, um, Yahweh by Yahshem Yahweh Shai's word, thundering it across the wilderness as long as he was free to preach to whoever would listen and then you gotta remember he preached to the point where he actually was beheaded and six finally he was faithful in winning people to Mashiach and turning them back many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their power 
Luke 1 and 16. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their power. He stands as a pattern for all who seek genuine greatness. And that's the end of the lesson. So uh, next week, Adawan Rataza, I can start um, on this next chapter, is chapter six, the fruits of true repentance. Uh, and with that being said, I hope this lesson was somewhat edifying. Not somewhat, I hope this lesson was edifying for anyone out there. And with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory. Or call Halal Yahweh by Yashim Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Racha Kodash Barakatham. Double honors to the apostles, the elders, a great minister. Peace and salutations to the Akim around the four corners of the earth. Pushing the truth with faith and sincerity. Shalom, shalom to the confusion of faith. Akim out there that we're hoping to join to our ranks and um, with that Shalom Akim and a ball ball